Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I've been surprised that many of the people commenting on earlier Janady Golovkin videos that I uh, did believe that I believe Golovkin has no talent whatsoever. Right? Believe that I see Golovkin really as a guy who, you know, is doing it with smoke and mirrors. Let me address uh, one of the more eloquent responses to the prior video. It's from YouTuber Scott Jarvis123. And uh, he opens his lengthy comment, and it's a real good comment. I encourage everyone to look at it. It's uh, on the video I made, I believe, yesterday. He says, Is Janady Golovkin invincible? No. No boxer is unbeatable, and everyone, including Andre Ward and Floyd Mayweather, have flaws. Dwyer believes Triple G to be nothing more than an unskilled bruiser or slugger whose defense is lacking or non-existent. Right? He says, I see defensive holes in Triple G's game, but I don't think it's due to a lack of skill. Triple G gets hit because he places an overwhelming emphasis on offense and his style carries inherent risks and liabilities. Right? Later in his comment, he asked the question, and I'm going to answer it. He says, what I'd really like to know, Dwyer, is who Triple G has to be before you give him any kind of praise or concede that he's more than a mere protected slugger. Now let me just say this, making videos here online, you actually get a track record. I would encourage people to just Google my name and Janady Golovkin's name here on YouTube and you're going to find out I've been tracking Golovkin for a very long time. I've praised Golovkin profusely when he was on his way through the ranks. I even made a video where I talked about how I thought the future belonged to two fighters. Tyson Fury, a heavyweight, and Janady Golovkin. Right? I was praising Golovkin before he became a huge name. But understand, just like you wonder how a batter is going to do against Madison Baumgartner, right, against real big league pitching, right? How's a batter going to do against Adam Wainwright? You wonder. The guy can have a great average in regular season games, but now it's the playoffs or the World Series. And you ask yourself, okay, this is the deep end of the pool, right? He's now stepped up his game, and he's now facing major league competition or elite competition, right? Everyone looks great when they're a contender and an unknown, right? It's when they get to this level against big-time competition that we then start to figure out what does the guy have and what does the guy not have. I think Janady Golovkin's very talented. Let me say, too, I've even praised Golovkin's trainer in fights not involving Golovkin, right? Carson Jones, years ago, before he fought Amir Khan. Look at that video. You'll see me praising Abel Sanchez, right? Abel Sanchez is a trainer whose guys tend to be stalkers, patient, clever stalkers, where they're not in front of you to get hit. They kind of stalk you at the side, but then suddenly, there they are, right? Janady Golovkin is a world-class puncher. Janady Golovkin is very accurate. You don't see him swinging and missing wildly, right? On his front foot, he's very dangerous. But aren't we at the part of his career where he's going to have to fight guys who might have him on his back foot? 
aren't we in the part of his career where some opponents are going to force him to make it to the second half of the fight? Let me say this. Right? Let me turn this on its head. I saw where Golovkin had made the same number of title defenses as Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Right? <laughs> now, the word protected gets thrown around a lot. But let me just ask you, boxing fan. When Marvin Hagler ruled the roost in the 1980s, wasn't it obvious that Hagler was taking on the best during that era? I mean, it got so ridiculous that Hagler started fantasizing about taking on a retired guy because he wasn't getting the glory that he wanted by taking on the very best. Right? Understand, before Hagler gets to Thomas Hearns, he had to fight Alan Minter. Understand, Hagler beats Hearns in a shootout. You remember John the Beast Mugabe? Hagler beats John the Beast Mugabe. Right, this is all before Hagler fights Sugar Ray Leonard. Now, somebody tell me, this is really 2012, 2013, and 2014 boxing. How does a guy at middleweight Right, match the number of title defenses that Marvin Hagler had without fighting Peter Quillen. I mean, did, didn't Quillen have a middleweight title for a while? How does Janady Golovkin make it into his 30s and make it through a record number of title defenses? Well, not a record number. We know in middleweight the standards Bernard Hopkins. But let's just say now he's up around the Marvin Hagler range. How does he do that without fighting Sergio Martinez? I mean, how? Somebody explain it to me. He hasn't fought Hassan and Jico. Right? He hasn't fought Felix Sturm. I mean, I thought these were guys who held a belt at some time in the last three years. Right? He hasn't fought Miguel Cotto. Right? Let's get creative. Let's include the 154 pounders. He hasn't fought Erislandi Lara. He hasn't fought Canelo. In fact, look at his record. Right? Understand He's fought guys like Curtis Stevens. I thought Curtis Stevens lost to Andre Durrell. Right? He's fought Matthew Macklin. Understand. Golovkin fights Curtis Stevens. Not Andre Durrell who beat Curtis Stevens. He fights Matthew Macklin. Not Sergio Martinez who beat Matthew Macklin. Right? The point I'm making, he fights Gabe Rosado. Right? He doesn't fight Alfredo Angulo who beat Gabe Rosado. Right? The point I'm making is simply this. When do we start to say that a champion is untested? Right? When do we start to really ask the question of not who does he have to fight to prove something to us, but when do we ask the question of why hasn't he fought anyone who you know, we can look at and say, oh, that's Hagler Herms. That's a defining moment. That's Hagler Duran. That's a defining moment. By the way, Duran, in interviews, says that Marvin Hagler was the toughest person he fought. Right? I mean, isn't it a mockery of the records? When a guy is up there Right? With Marvin Hagler, in terms of the number of title defenses, he hasn't fought Dimitri um, Pirog. Right? He hasn't fought Danny Jacobs. I mean, folks, this, this is a phantom reign. Right? He's only now fighting Daniel Gill, 
Marco Antonio Rubio. Right, he hasn't fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Wasn't Chavez Jr. in the mix in the middleweight division over the last four years? So for me to say that Golovkin is untested, I'll tell you what, test my hypothesis. Right, tell me the guys who you feel he fought who were big names. Understand, some of these guys have had problems after fighting Golovkin. Right? And so, I think now is the time for Golovkin to prove to us who he is. Right? When he was a contender, when he was a young champion, I praised him profusely. My point is simply this. He's relatively untested. I'm sorry. Beating Marco Antonio Rubio in two rounds in a fight where you know, you don't get tested at all. He, he doesn't get hit with anything substantial. What exactly are we supposed to learn from these two-round fights? I know. The guy he's fighting is the person who's supposed to force the fight into the later rounds. But all I'm saying is I'd feel a lot more comfortable in judging a fighter if I've actually seen that fighter get tested. Right? I mean... Golovkin's never been on the canvas. Good for him. Great. Right? But, you know, again, we don't know how he would react to being hurt or down. Right? Frankly, I haven't seen Golovkin really put on his back foot. Right? I mean, we just haven't. So... You know, I understand people think, hey, I'm just here hating on him and stuff like that uh, by actually suggesting that some world-class fighters, right, the best pound-for-pound -pound in boxing, Floyd Mayweather, um, former champion Sean Porter, who used to fight at middleweight all the way up to 165 and who's explosive inside, right, and who has gone 12 rounds. We've seen Sean Porter in wars. Right? Just a simple suggestion that these guys would be competitive against Janady Golovkin, might even beat Golovkin, has conjured up the kind of comments to the last two videos I've made. I encourage people to read them. I hope the boxing world understands how popular this guy is. Right? Understand, you know, he hasn't had the big pay-per-view event yet. But just understand, the buzz is pronounced on him. Right? Even though the guy, like young George Foreman, right, hasn't been seriously tested. Right? I mean, Sergio Martinez is now, what, in his late 30s, early 40s? He was the middleweight king for a while. Never ran into Janady Golovkin. Right, Kelly Pavlik, who Sergio Martinez fought, who Bernard Hopkins fought at a higher weight, somehow never ran into Janady Golovkin. Right, who ran into Janady Golovkin? Osamu Adama, Curtis Stevens, Nudo Hiro Ishida, Gabe Rosada, Gregoris Proxa, right? Matthew Macklin. These are the guys who Golovkin has fought. It's only now that he's facing guys who you say, okay, you know what? His opponent could be king, Daniel Gill. I, I give Golovkin the Gill fight. The problem with the Gill fight, as I've pointed out, is Gill lands his best punch of the fight right before he gets knocked out. Right? You realize that Gil could hit Golovkin. You know, the art of boxing is to hit and not get hit. Right? If the game plan is to get hit while you're hitting the other guy, in my opinion, you're not top shelf. So let's see how Golovkin handles his next few matches. I'd like to see him in against world-class opponents.
right? Maybe even guys we've heard of, right? Golovkin, Miguel Cotto, I think that's a great fight. Golovkin, Sean Porter, I'd love to see it. Golovkin, Floyd Mayweather, why not? Golovkin, Peter Quillen. Golovkin, Danny Jacobs. Golovkin, Hassan and Jikum. Understand, I'm not naming unknowns at middleweight, right? I'm naming champs and former champs, right? Let's just say it would have been impossible, literally, for Marvin Hagler in the 1980s to have the belt as long as he had it without fighting other big names at middleweight. Right? Understand, as it was, Hagler fights. Hearns, I mean, guys were coming to middleweight to fight Hagler. Hearns, Duran, right? John DeBeast, Mugavi, Mustafa Hampshire, Alan Minter, right? Vito Altafermo. Right? Think about it. I'm guessing most of the people watching this video don't even remember how Golovkin got his WBA middleweight title, right? So forgive me, but Golovkin in his 30s is only now debuting at the elite levels in boxing, right? I mean, that's the bottom line. When you think of 2011, when Golovkin, by the way, keep in mind, he wins the title in 2010, right? If you're thinking from 2011 to now, think about all the guys within range of fighting at middleweight. How did this guy avoid most of them, right? Arthur Abraham. Like, these guys haven't fought Golovkin. Let me point out, too. You know, when Arthur Abraham was able to be outboxed and maneuvered by Carl Frotch. But understand, Carl Frotch has boxing skills. Right? Carl Frotch has a jab. Right? Cobra knows how to use length and stuff like that. But we know that Arthur Abraham is still one of the hardest punchers in boxing. And you simply can't bomb rush him. You have to move. Andre Durrell. You have to move and box him strategically. Robert Stiglitz. Right? You can't come in and just start throwing bombs. Why hasn't Golovkin fought Arthur Abraham yet? Think about it. Right? The public is enamored right now. But they've only just discovered this guy. Aren't you a bit surprised that the guy has had a belt since 2010? I got to take this call. Hope you visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.